And our final speaker um, is uh, Colo Rathburn. Colo is a staff member of the Senate Appro Appropriations Committee on the Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies. And he will be, I hope, speaking to how we turn all of this into coherent policy and maybe even pay for it. Colo. Right, right after the, I tell you about the cure for cancer that we've also come up with. So. We've got that. No, no, no small task. So it's late. I'm going to try to keep my remarks very short. My former boss is speaking here in, in, in 10 minutes, so I certainly don't want to cut into his time. But so this is what I want to do. I want to talk to you a little bit about my job, specifically what I do, uh, some of the programs that have been touched on today. There's not much more that I can add to sort of the conflicts and the things that, that rise up to our level. And then I want to take a step back and sort of give you a budget perspective from the committee's view, what we're dealing with now, and sort of the political pressures that we feel from you know multiple members um, working with the House and also you know with the new administration. So I'll start off by saying this: when we talk about food security, you know what one thing that I really thought about uh, in preparing for this, and and when I speak to folks about aquaculture and, and fisheries and all the sort of stuff that we deal with is when I was a grad student in 2009, I was at an international conference in Prague, and I remember going downtown in this landlocked, almost Eastern European country, and the most hopping restaurant downtown was a sushi restaurant. And everyone was ordering you know, tuna and fish, and it just sh it shocked me. This, these are people who historically had never eaten or had a, you know, a palate for, for tuna and, and for fish. And, and they're eating all this food, and there's a lot of seafood coming through, th through that market. And it just sort of made me think about, you know, historically, coastal communities were fishing and, and eating seafood, and now we have a much larger population. But not only that, we also have globalization and commerce and people who really want to eat seafood that live in Las Vegas and Idaho and, and in Prague, in the Czech Republic. And so, we, you know, we're going to have to find a way to, to feed these people and to meet those demands. And it's not going to be an easy task, but I do think that aquaculture will be, um, will be very key in, in trying to um, address that. Um, I work on, on CGS, and that's Commerce Justice Science. So there's 12 appropriations bills. Our appropriations bill funds the Department of Commerce, Department of Justice, and Science, which is NASA, National Science Foundation, OSTP. And to give you sort of a global perspective, you know, I, I handle the accounts for the, in the Department of Commerce, which, which includes NOAA. And, you know, we, Congress passes a budget and we get an overall top line spending level. And then we have to make decisions about, you know, do we fund aquaculture or do we fund the Bureau of Prisons? Do we fund satellite programs that are, you know, have to be launched for, for weather um, prediction or do we fund, you know, NSF program? Um, or uh, human exploration in NASA. So these are the sort of things that, you know, as an appropriator on the committee, we have to make these tough decisions. And one thing that's helpful, particularly when we have sort of pressing budget times and budget pressures, is the, the people that care about certain programs, for everyone in this room, for things that you care about, is going to your members, coming to me, talking to, your, to staff people in your district, and telling them what, what your priorities are, but not only sort of these like big, broad, general themes like resilience or you know oceans, but tell me tell me what program really affects you. Can you point to the program at, at NOAA or NSF or at you know any of these agencies and say you know this funding line has done this for me, and this is what how our country is benefiting, whether it be through job creation, education, or whatever. And I think you know coming here today, I wanted to have that frank conversation with you because. Things aren't looking pretty going forward. And you know, I think everyone in this room sort of should understand that. And it, it, it doesn't have much to do with who's in the White House right now. I mean, we, regardless of, of what happens, and we don't have a, a budget request yet from the White House, so you know, there's nothing really to talk about there. But regardless, our, our budget, you know, according to the Budget Control Act that was passed by Congress, we're going down from, from 16 and 17 levels. That was always part of the plan. So. You know, we have less money to, to work with. The pie is getting smaller. And, you know, obviously everyone still has high demands. So, you know, I, just, I say that not to try to damper the mood in this room because I don't want to do that. But um, I say that because I, I think it's critically important now more than ever for you, for everyone in this room, to understand sort of what, are, what programs matter to you 
And when, when I and my colleagues in the house and my counterparts sit down, start really going, th working through the weeds on this, and ha then have to make our informed recommendations to our bosses when we write an appropriations bill, you know, when we have to make tough decisions, it's going to be a lot more helpful if I hear from, you know, 20 of you in this room saying these programs are really important and this is why. And, you know, maybe I don't hear as much for, for some of the other things that come up. So I guess I sort of wanted to leave it at that. And, and one thing that I've really found helpful because I've spoken at a few events this year so far is, is and I was hoping we were going to have time for this, was to have some, some discussion. I think there's some good talks today. Um, I think some of the stuff that's been discussed in this room is really helpful for, for folks to be reminded of in here, but really this message needs to be taken out there as well. And everything you're talking about with aquaculture, the way that you know, sea surface and, and atmosphere interaction drives things that are inland and not just on the coast, people need to hear that. And I'm glad that we had a congressman from, from Colorado up here to talk. But I mean, we, we need to start getting more people on board for, to support these programs. Um, if you want to at least sort of see them stay healthy, I think in, in the next few years when we're, we're, we're really, we're facing tough budgets. So I'll leave it there. I look forward to any questions that you might have. And uh, I thank the panel and, and the Consortium for Ocean Leadership for inviting me. Thank you.